Welcome into the Cox Activity Center. Kelsey Bigelow joined alongside Luke Vi, and we are just about ready to start game number three in this gymnasium today. The first for the Northeast Hawks, Northeast women taking on Iowa Central Triton women. So both teams coming in 3-0 and into this matchup. It's going to be a good game. Northeast has, however, had Iowa Central's number in the past years. They are 10-1 and all time against Iowa Central. And they're going to have to get off to a hot start. Kind of had a slow start yesterday when they played against Iowa Lakes. So looking at this game, Luke, what do you expect out of both of these teams today? I expect that they will both uh, take the ball into consideration. Ball control will be huge today with both teams posting very high turnover averages. And Iowa Central also beats Northeast in all re aspects of rebounding. So picking a player and boxing out will be key. And um, Iowa Central is also shooting almost 50% from the field and 40% from the which means spacing and closing out is important. And lastly, Macy, Brianna, Kyla, and Beth have all put up over six steals this season. So watch for them to pick up a few today with Iowa Central's high turnover margin. Anything else I forgot? Yeah, I, I just think it's going to be a back and forth matchup. I think it's really going to be crucial for Northeast to start off hot. I mean, as I said yesterday against Iowa uh, Lakes, they really had a slow start. Looking at some team statistics for this year, I mean, Northeast has done a great job so far. Like I said, coming in 3-0 and into this game. Their field goal percentage and free throw percentage, however, did drop off last night as they started 0-7 for from the free throw line. So that's something that they're really going to have to work on tonight. Yep. So taking a look at it, Northeast taking on Iowa Central. Both teams 3-0, and as I said earlier. A player to watch for Northeast is going to be, it's really a, just an all-around team play out of this Northeast team, and that's what I like about this team. Uh, Beth Matisse had 17 points yesterday. Kyla Moore had nine. Then you look at Brianna Stouffer pitched in 11 points, so an all-around team effort. You look on the other side of the ball for Iowa Central, and they have that same ability. I mean, you have someone like Isabel West, who had 14 points yesterday. Then you look at Jordan Ingbrecht, who had 12 points. So it's an all-around team effort for both of these teams. We're going to take a quick break, and when we come back, we'll get you your starters for the matchup Northeast versus Iowa Central here on the Hawk Sports Network. Mom, if my knee doesn't get better, I'm not even going to play Saturday. These should help. I got them when I threw my back out. Are those your painkillers? I shouldn't be taking those. I got them from the doctor. What's the worst that could happen? Seriously? Lock them up or whatever. All right. I'll find out how to get rid of them. Probably shouldn't have them in the house anyway. Get on top of it before they do. Every 24 minutes, tipped furniture or a falling TV sends an injured child to the emergency room. Preventing tip-over incidents is easy, inexpensive, and only takes five minutes. Learn how to secure your furniture and TVs to protect children at anchorit.gov. Welcome back into the Cox Activity Center. Kelsey Bigelow joined alongside Luke Vi for Northeast first game of the day. It's been a busy gymnasium here. The Hawks Classic, a great tournament. We saw a few games yesterday where the Northeast women came away with a win, as well as the Iowa Central Tritons who will be facing each other today. Both teams coming in 3-0. and Last season, Northeast beat Iowa Central 66-50 and they've really just had their number beating them. They are 10 and one all time against Iowa Central. We're gonna take a quick break for the national anthem and when we come back, we'll get you your starters. Time for game three of day two of the 2019 Hawks Classic. Starting lineups now for the Iowa Central Community College. Oh, excuse me, we're doing national anthem. Please stand, remove cover for our national anthem.
Now let's get ready for game three of day two of the 2019 Hawks Classic. For the Iowa Central Community College starting lineup. At guard wearing number four. She's a five foot seven sophomore from Rockford, Illinois. Mardea Cross. At guard wearing number 10. She's a five foot seven sophomore from Fort Dodge, Iowa. Justice Crooks. At guard wearing number 12. A five foot five freshman from Watertown, South Dakota. Annie Cummings. At forward wearing number 22. A six foot sophomore from Bradley, Illinois. Aaliyah Hull, and wearing number 34 at forward, a six foot one freshman from Shakopee, Minnesota, Isabel West. And now for your Northeast Hawks, wearing number five at guard, she's a five foot six freshman from Giorna, Spain, Beth Matisse. Wearing number 10, a guard, five foot six sophomore from Norfolk, Nebraska, Kyla Moore. At forward, number 11, Six foot three sophomore from Mostar, Bosnia, Mina Hatzi Yusanovic. At guard number 23, a five foot eight freshman from David City, Nebraska, Brianna Stouffer. And in guard wearing number 24, a five foot 10 freshman from Laurel, Nebraska, Lorna Maxson. Head coach for the Northeast Hawks, Matt Savela. Head coach for Iowa Central, Kelly Kruger. And we are set for tip-off. Iowa Central, Northeast Community College. It is going to be a good one as the women's teams both coming in 3-0 into this matchup. So we are just minutes away from tip-off. As Iowa Central will control the tip. Controlling the offense is Justice Crooks for Iowa Central. Crooks, top of the key, looking to get her offensive start. I'm really liking the communication from both teams. As up in a good floater, but can't get it to fall. That was cross. As Northeast is going to play a lot of fast-paced ball here as they push the ball down the court. Beth Matisse standing at the top of the key, swinging it all the way around. On the far side as they make the drive. Brianna Stouffer puts it up, and Lorna Max in there, but can't haul it in as Iowa Central comes away with the ball. Northeast is going to be looking at Amina's 6-3 stature tonight to pick up for a lot of the rebounds that they may not be able to get in those situations. Yeah, Amina being one of their main players on the inside, she will have her hands full tonight as Iowa Central looks to get their offense rolling. A lot of standing around and a good steal by Beth Matisse as she pushes it down the court, does not have numbers, decides to pull it back out, finds Kyla Moore on the far side. Kyla Moore feeding it to the inside and gets it to Amina Haju Husanovic for two. First points of the game goes to Haju Husanovic. That was a great look by Beth. He's looking down to Amina who was open down on the post. On the far side, Iowa Central looks to respond. Cross stands at the top of the key, gets it over to Cummins, swinging it all the way around up for three. That is West as she puts it up, can't get it to fall in a fight for the ball underneath. It is going to be Northeast possession. There was a lot of space between Amina and the Central player, I think it was number 34, but those long arms, she's able to just make a really great contested shot and force her to get off balance and just make a bad shot. Northeast back in control of the ball. Kyla Moore looking to set up the offense. The sophomore standout as she swings it over, gets it to the inside. Maxson bodying it up, and she's going to be called for the travel. So the first turnover of this game, and that has been Northeast's struggle so far this season, as well as Iowa Central. Iowa Central averaging 23 turnovers a game. Northeast right up there with them, with about 20 themselves. So both teams looking to clean it up as Northeast puts a little full court pressure on. Crooks picks up her dribble. She is caught as she finds a teammate. Gets it back to the top to Cummins. Cummins over to Cross. And a deep three, a deep three by Annie Cummins. Gets on the board for first for Iowa Central. That was a good take. That was also a really deep three. That was that was an NBA style three and Matisse looks to respond with one of her own and she does just that. Beth Matisse, four three. So Northeast leading five to three right now with seven and a half minutes remaining as Northeast looks, looks to respond on the defensive side. Cummins up top trying to take it up against Beth Matisse. 
as this Iowa Central offense needs a little bit quicker ball movement, and they are going to get an offensive foul there. So Northeast takes possession once again. That foul will be on Justice Crooks. So first foul of the game is on the board now, and now we're just getting things rolling. We are down to about seven minutes left in quarter number one. Kyla Moore stands at the top of the key, gets the high screen and roll from Haji Husanovic. Florida Maxson directing Stouffer down low. Beth Matisse getting herself a high pick and roll and a good pass by Ma Beth Matisse and finds her girl, Laura Maxson. A great pass there from Beth Matisse, a over the head, no look pass as Haji Husanovic is right in there to get the steal. And it is going to stay in Iowa Central's hands as checking into the game now is Jordan Engbrick. Engbrecht had 12 points yesterday in their matchup against Central Community College. Iowa Central inbounding underneath their own basket and a just a safe pass up to the top of the key. As Cross looks to drive, step back, fade away and gets it to fall, nothing but net. Justice Crooks for two. Kyla Moore pushing it right back at their face as she does so well. Haju Sanovich kicks it back out, finds Kyla Moore in the corner. Moore puts it up off the front of the iron and coming down with the rebound. Kyla Moore right there and gets the steal. And just like that, Kyla Moore gets her first steal of the game and her first two points. That was great vision by Kyla. We saw this coming out of high school because in high school, she, held, she holds the records for most steals in a career and in a season at Norfolk. Yeah, she is very quick and sneaky and she loves to steal the ball, get some easy points off of that. That is where the good majority of her points come from as Iowa Central tries for three and that rattles out. Haji Husanovic coming down with the ball as they are pushing the ball ahead and that is their strength as Stouffer tries to make a little offense herself, puts it up, gets a hand on it as that'll fall. And a timeout is going to be called by the Iowa Central coach. We're gonna keep it right here though. Kelly Kruger is the coach for Iowa Central. This is his fourth season as the coach here, but he has a lot of experience, Luke. He has 34 seasons coaching at the collegiate level. So a great coach for Iowa Central. I really like the pace of play that Northeast is playing at. Keeping it going, keeping it active getting Iowa Central on their toes. And you never know what's gonna happen, especially with Kyla. She was coming back to half court, but then she saw how slow they were playing. She comes up, makes a great steal and a great basket. You're exactly right. Northeast completely dominating as far as pace time right now. And it is hard to play to the level of Northeast pace. And I'm sure that's what Kelly Kruger is telling his team right now is that you have to slow it down. You cannot try to play at their tempo because Northeast is a fast team and they have very good stamina. They can last the entire game playing at this speed. So right now, Northeast leading nine to five with about 5.50 left on the clock in the first quarter. As Iowa Central has possession, they will try to get back into this game as Cummins fakes out. Florida Maxson puts it up, a little floater off the backboard. Amina Haji Husanovic comes down with it and Kyla Ryan will push it back ahead for Northeast. Matisse on that far side gives it to Haji Husanovic who makes an up and under move and a good move there by Haji Husanovic. That's what we want to see out of her. That was a great play on both ends of the floor by Amina. Her height really helps her in the rebounding on defense and it also helps with rolls on post moves on offense. As Isabel West gets her first bucket of the game, she has her hands full going against Haji Husanovic. It's going to be a battle down low today as Stouffer swings it to the far side. Beth Matisse up for three and just off on that one as Iowa Central comes down with the board. That's Jordan Engbrecht. Northeast is still keeping them on their toes playing full court press. And Northeast is so good at that full court pressure. Creates a lot of turnovers, which in lead, which in turn leads to points for Northeast. As they feed the big girl inside, it is taken away. Beth Matisse pushing it up ahead. They do not have numbers. She decides she's gonna pull it back out, finds Kyla Moore at the top of the key, swings it to Stouffer, Stouffer with the deep three, Stouffer off the high part of the backboard, and Lorna Mankson fighting for the rebound but can't come away with it. Not a very high percentage look there for Stouffer as there is still plenty of time on the shot clock. And another deep, a deep three or a pass, and Iowa Central is going to come down with it and throws it off of Amina Haji Husanovic, so Iowa Central retains possession as a big line change there for Northeast. A lot of girls checking into the game. It'll be Iowa Central ball from underneath their own basket. 4-14 remaining in the first quarter. 
Cross finds her girl in the corner, puts it up a deep three. That is going to go off the back, top of the backboard and finds its way into the shot clock. So a whistle is blown as Iowa Central take, or Northeast takes possession. Northeast is doing a really great job forcing them to put up some bad shots just in, in with them, not with Amina out, but with Katarina. And she also is a very tall. They're able to get some rebounds on defense. As Carbonell once again, that has been her struggle, her downfall this season, getting called for the travel as she just gets a little bit ahead of herself. She has a lot of good uh, ball handles, but just a little bit ahead of herself. Stewart bringing the ball down for Iowa Central now as they will drive to the hoop. Ingbrecht kicks it back out, finds Crooks. Crooks puts up an awkward shot, can't get it to fall. Kalonic coming down with the rebound. Macy Kalonic, another sophomore who has done great things for this Northeast program. As Beth Matisse gets the turnover and almost right back to Northeast, but lucky for Iowa Central, they catch a break there. Ingbrecht up to the Ooh. top of the key to West. West finds a wide open player underneath, and that is Cross underneath for the easy two. Northeast lead cut down to two as Beth Matisse takes it herself. And there's going to be a foul called there. That is going to be on Stewart. So Northeast takes possession underneath their own basket here. Leading 11 to nine with three minutes left in this first quarter. Carbonell looking to find an open player. Can't find anybody and gives it away there. A steal for Stewart as she tries to take it one on two. Dribbles the between the defenders and decides she better pull it back out. And a good drive there, driving kick as West stands at the top of the key. Over to Crooks. Crooks swings it over to Ingbrecht. And taken away there, Carbonell takes it away, trying to go one on two. Behind the back move, puts up the little floater, can't get it to fall. Macy Kalonic there, but getting a little pushy there. So Macy Kalonic will come away with a foul there. With Northeast averaging uh, about 18 uh, foul, personal fouls a game, so far in this first quarter with only one, and two minutes and 45 seconds left. They're doing a really good job controlling themselves and not trying to take too much on what they can handle. Yeah, they have done a great job with that so far tonight. We saw them getting some early foul trouble last night against Iowa, or, uh, against Iowa Lakes, so that is something I'm sure Coach Massavela stressed to this team, that they have to clean it up both on the defensive side and the offensive side. As trying to get some offense going is Stewart as she finds Cross coming to the hoop. And a good dish out there for Cross but unable to finish underneath is Ingbrecht. And Iowa Central comes away with the offensive rebound and a good cut, good pass, great play all around as Cross finds herself another bucket. That was a great look. Standing at the top of the key, Beth Matisse finds a cutting Macy Kalonic who sneaks right by her with a good swim move. Macy Kalonic for two. Stewart really just making Carbonell work at the top of the key. Ingbrecht looking for any opening. And she swings it over to, to Hole. Hole picks up her dribble. Kalonic about coming away with the steal there. Cross trying to do it herself again. And up to the hoop and an and one opportunity. A good finish there by Annie Cummings. That foul will go on Lorna Maxson for her first foul of the game. Checking in for Northeast. Kyla Moore and Jackie Schwanebeck. Schwanebeck finding herself some early playing time in this game. Usually does not get in until the later part of the second half, but she's in there and she's ready to go. Stepping up to the line for one shot as she sinks it there. Annie Cummins, six points on the night. Northeast trailing for the first time in this game, 13 to 14 with a minute and a half left in the first quarter. Carbonell decides to take it herself, stopped a step back right there, and Carbonell buries that one for her first points of the night. That was a good decision just to keep it and just take the shot herself. Carbonell has a nice touch, and getting a little bit ahead of herself is Stewart, a turnover on Iowa Central. Northeast has the lead 15 to 14 as Kyla Moore brings the ball down the court. Gorak with the high pick and roll. Trying to set another screen as Kyla Moore uses it. Kicks it back out to Schwanebeck. 
Schwanebeck gets it out of her hands early. Zagorak working hard underneath and then up and under. Can't get it to fall as she hits the bottom of the backboard. So Iowa Central racing down the court. Cummins working hard against Kyla Moore and finds a cutting West. West puts it up in an up and under and they're going to get Zagorak with a foul there. So Katarina Zagorak for her first foul of the night. Checking into the game now for Iowa Central is Cross. Standing at the line right now is Isabel West, who is only a 57% free throw shooter on the season so far. So something that she has needed to work on as she gets the lucky roll there and gets shot number one to fall. Iowa Central is a team this season so far. They're only shooting 63% from the free throw line. As Isabel West missed that one, but Cross there for the offensive board. And Cross has Northeast defenders draped all over her. And they're going to have a tie up. So jump ball, Northeast possession. This game is all knotted up at 15 apiece with 45 seconds remaining in the first quarter. And it is going to be a close game all night. As Mesa Klonik stands with the ball above her head. And a good pump fake in a drive to the hoop, takes it herself, can't get it to fall, fighting for her own rebound, but Isabel West is just too tall. And I believe they're going to get Zagorak there again with another foul. So Zagorak picking up two fouls very quickly. Haji Husanovic is going to come in and relieve Zagorak. As Northeast is going to try to keep, keep control of this game as it is tied up at 15 apiece right now. Crooks swings it over to Cross. And going for the steal there is Kalana can't get it as Cross will drive and puts it up, can't get it to fall. West coming down and that is going to go off of West, I believe, so Northeast. They say it bounced off of Schwanebeck, so it is going to be Iowa Central ball from underneath their own hoop with 16 seconds left in the first quarter. Cross finds Crooks, Crooks trying to do it herself. Feeds it to the inside and gets a good look there. Imina Haju Husanovic comes down with it. Kyla Moore going to try to make something happen for the end of this first quarter as she takes it herself and going to draw the foul against Cross. It'll be foul number one on Cross. Iowa Central is out rebounding Northeast nine to six right now and they hope that with Amina and her tall stature in there, they can start to pull down a couple more rebounds, get a few more possessions before halftime. And right now, Northeast is trying to get on the board before the end of the first quarter. They have two seconds as they get it into Schwanebeck. Schwanebeck out to Moore. Moore puts up a shot, and it does not fall. So Northeast and Iowa Central are all knotted up at 15 apiece at the end of the first quarter. We're going to take a quick break. We'll be right back here on the Hawk Sports Network. Welcome back to the Cox Activity Center. Kelsey Bigelow joined alongside Luke Vi for the first Northeast game of the day. It is the Hawks Classic. We have a lot more basketball still left to be played. We are at the end of quarter number one, and Iowa Central and Northeast are tied up at 15 apiece as Northeast has possession to start off the second quarter. Kyla Moore stands at the top of the key trying to direct her offense. Matisse over in the corner as she is very closely by Crooks. A good look on the inside, almost taken away as Stouffer is there to recover that pass. Kyla Moore with another pass there to Lorna Maxson. 
Matisse trying to create her own offense, and she is going to get called with the double dribble. So first turnover for Beth Matisse of the night. And that is just something right there. You can't try to do too much on your own there. Mm -hmm. Iowa Central is doing a really good job playing the press defense. As Northeast adds a little bit of pressure, trying to get it across half court, Crooks is able to do so to the top of the key as Hole stands there. Feeds it to the inside, cross underneath. A small player to be playing underneath, but she has done it all night tonight as she can't get that one to fall. Stouffer pushing the ball ahead out in front. Stouffer puts it up and off the backboard. A good finish there by Brianna Stouffer to get her first points of the night. Crooks swings it to Cummings as Kyla Moore, a great defender, is all over her. And a good pump fake there and right down the middle of the lane puts it up but can't get it to fall. Cummings right there. The short Cummings 5-5 five, five is underneath the hoop and comes away at the board and the points. And that's something Northeast cannot afford with a shorter team that they are playing. They really have to be able to box out and pull down those rebounds. Stouffer over to Matisse. Matisse finds Maxson on the inside and Maxson gets double teamed, tries to put it up, but is not lucky enough to get it over those two defenders. Cummings puts it up for three. Cummings and a deep three, but they are going to call a foul. So Cummings heading to the line for three shots. They're going to call that on Kyla Moore. So Kyla Moore's first foul of the night. And with the new substitution rule, they will check in the players right now. So checking into the game once again is Jordan Ingbrecht. Cummings heading to the line. As she hits off the back iron for that one. This game's still tied up at 17 apiece with eight minutes and 17 seconds left to go in the second quarter. Cummings finds the bottom of the net for that shot. And off the front of the iron, but Iowa Central pulls down the rebound as Hole is right all over that one. So back to the top. Incorrect as Kyla Moore goes for the steal. Not quick enough to get there. The shot clock winding down. Seven seconds. Cummings going to have to put up a shot herself. Down to three seconds on the shot clock as Ingbrecht drives to the hoop and is going to get the foul called before the time goes off. So she will be heading to the line. Jordan Ingbrecht, a good drive there. They're going to put that foul on Haji Usanovic. And a great awareness of the shot clock there for Iowa Central. Ingbrecht at the line, shooting two. She rattles that one home. Right now, Iowa Central just shooting 50% from the free throw line as that one does not fall either. Haji Usanovic pulls it down and Northeast is back to work on the offensive side of the ball. Maxson trying to take her girl one on one, picks up her dribble, finds more as she swings in and takes it herself. Four defenders around her, goes up, cannot get it to fall. Feeds it to the inside west. A wide open shot, but she can't get that to fall either. So Amina Hajuzanovic pulls down the board. Northeast is do doing a really good job crashing the board. Maybe the box out could be a little bit better, but crashing the board is definitely working for them. As Matisse tries to make it happen herself, kicks it back out to Stouffer, standing at the top of the key. Stouffer step back three, puts it up just short off the front iron. Pulled down by Stewart as she races down the court. A three on two as they do not have numbers, so she pulls it back out. Crooks, top of the key against Stouffer. Swings it to the far side. West standing behind the three point line as Stewart directs the offense. And Crooks thought about the three, takes it to the hoop instead. And Amina Haju Uzanovic is there and gets her hand on it. And they are going to call a tie up underneath the hoop. A big time stop there from Amina. Checking back into the game is Cross. Iowa Central is seeming to start to pick up the tempo because some of those Northeast starters haven't came out yet or they've just been playing for a long time. And they're starting to get really gassed. And the coaches, I do believe, know that. And they're taking advantage of, advantage of it while they can, excuse me. As West feeds it to the inside and puts it up and right through the net as Isabel West on the board once again. Florida 
Jalen Maxson standing on the near side. Takes it to the top of the key. Stouffer over to Moore. And these Northeast girls are tired, as you said, Luke. And uh, Iowa Central is going to take full advantage of it. They are substituting a lot more than Northeast. And again, another tie-up. This time, it will be Iowa or Northeast ball. So Northeast retains possession. Right now they are trailing 21 to 17. There's six minutes and 20 seconds left to go in the first half. Northeast one for five behind the arc. So trying to get anything going here. As Stouffer tries to throw it over to Maxson, but right there, well defended is Jordan Ingbrecht. So Massavela wants to talk things over with his team. We're going to take a quick break with him right now. Northeast trailing 21-17 in the first half. I have a voice in the freedom to express it. I have my faith as a freedom of religion. I find the truth and have the freedom to share it. I have a cause and the freedom to peacefully assemble. I have a concern and the freedom to petition my government. Think first. Know your five freedoms of the First Amendment. Go to thinkfirstamendment.org to learn more. Welcome back to the Cox Activity Center. Kelsey Bigelow joined alongside Luke Vi And these teams, this has been a great game back and forth. We're sitting about six minutes until halftime. Northeast trailing 17 to 21 against Iowa Central. And Luke, what is going to be the key for Northeast to climb back on into this game? The key for Northeast to climb back on into this is to try to get some rebounds. They're being out rebounded right now 14 to nine. And during those rebounds, they're also fouling, allowing them to shoot free throws. They're four of eight from the free throw line, 50%. It's not more or less the shooting aspect. It's the fouling rebound post play aspect of the game. That I think if they fine tune that, you know, going to halftime, talk it over, and I think they'll be able to make a pretty good comeback. Yeah, I agree. I mean, those free throws are crucial. Again, they started out yesterday. Actually, Northeast hasn't been to the free, th free throw line yet, but yesterday they were 0 of 7 to start off as Amina Hadjusanovic finds an easy bucket from the elbow. Northeast putting on the full court pressure once again. With Iowa Central averaging 17 uh, fouls a game, they're doing a really good job fouling, not fouling right now. They have cleaned it up for sure as Crooks tries to set up her offense, swung to the outside, a deep three there as Matisse pulls down the rebound and trying to push it ahead, have numbers, Maxson over to Moore and a great feed there by Lorna Maxson as a foul is called, I believe it will be an and one opportunity for Northeast. A great push ahead there. Matisse over to Max and Max and over to Moore and a great finish there for Kyla Moore. That was great effort by Kyla on the defensive end to come back and close, her, close out her opponent and make it a really heavily contested shot. As Kyla Moore heads to the line, so far this season, a 73% shooter from the free throw line and sinks that one for her fifth point of the night. And Northeast back to their full court pressure. It's what they love to do. And Mount Moore strips it away. A good pick there by Kyla Moore. And she gets the foul drawn. So that foul will go against Justice Crooks. Her second foul. Kyla's fired up right now, trying to get her team going, just try to get something, uh, just try to get something going within the team itself. Try to get into halftime with the lead. She is a great leader for this Northeast team as she is on the far side, finds a cutting Brianna Stouffer and Stouffer cannot finish it. And she wants that one back for sure. A wide open bunny shot from underneath and Stouffer can't put it away. Top of the key, Crooks swings it over to Cummins who's back in the game. Northeast has control of the lead right now, 22-21. As Cross is underneath, looks underneath the basket, gets caught up, finds Cummins, a wide open three, and she is way deep on that one. Backside rebound, Cross puts it up, and Cross getting the back door rebound there. And you know, it's something that they're going to have to work on because Cross is not that tall. She's only 5'7", and Northeast really needs to work on the backside rebound. So Northeast right now, trailing 23-22. We're gonna keep it right here. They have five minutes left until halftime, and I think that they really need to focus on boxing out. As you said, right now they're getting out-rebounded 16 to 10, so 
that's really the aspect that they need to pick it up on. Yeah, as I was saying coming out of the last timeout, it's the post play that they need to work on. It's not more or less on the outside field goal range. Of just shooting one of seven from uh, three, and they're shooting nine of 25 from the field. So it's not more or less that. They need to be able to box out and get some rebounds, bring it back on offense, and let the players do the work and try to bring this lead back. Yeah, you're exactly right, especially against this Iowa Central Triton team who only has two girls over six foot. So they are very well matched up with Northeast. Both teams only two girls over six foot. But Northeast has played both of those players. Iowa Central has not. So really need to take advantage of their size opportunity out there. Northeast has been having really good ball movement coming out of the first quarter. As Matisse gets the high screen, doesn't decide to use it, tries to take it herself. Matisse working up hard. Swings it to Haji Hosanovich. Lorna Maxson for a deep three with a hand in her face, and Lorna Maxson buries that one, finds the bottom of the net for three. That was a great look by Lorna. And Maxson gets that contested three to fall, and maybe a little bit of a momentum swing for Northeast. Ross taking it against their 2-3 defense. Northeast has fallen back to a 2-3 defense as she splits the defenders, puts it up, a little floater over Haji Hosanovich, and buries that one. A great shot from Cross. Kalonic on the far side. Matisse finds Maxson. Northeast has to have a little quicker ball movement here. Has thrown away. That'll be a turnover for Northeast. That'll go up on the charts of Brianna Stouffer. As Stouffer will make her way to the bench, Carbonell checking back into the game. This game, once again, all tied up. 25 apiece with four minutes remaining until halftime. Brooks, top of the key, directs her offense, tries to split the defenders, kicks it out to West. West for three, and West rattles it home. A three-pointer for the 6-1 freshman. A skip pass over to Carbonell on the far side. Back to Maxson. Kalonic trying the passing cut. Maxson, top of the key, finds Kalonic. Feeds it to the inside. Haji Husanovic decides to kick it back out. Maxson lost her dribble, cannot dribble in the corner. As Matisse takes a one-on-one -on -one against Crooks. Spin move for Matisse and loses her dribble. And that'll be a Northeast turnover as Iowa Central racing back down the court. Cummins standing in the corner, thought about the three, pulls it back and sets up the offense. Northeast, not as much defensive pressure as they are in their 2-3 defense instead of man. Gets it to the inside as that ball bounces around on the floor, fighting for it. As Carbonell comes away with it, gets it over to Kalonic. As Northeast can push it, and a good save there. And almost an over and back call there on Haji Husanovic. Lucky break for Northeast. Carbonell finds Haji Husanovic, top of the key. You want to keep her down low as much as you can as a high pick and roll, and Macy Kalonic missed her wide open there. Carbonell takes it to the hoop with her little Euro step and take it away. So Northeast racking up the turnovers these last few possessions. Brooks, top of the key. Two minutes left in the first half. Right now, Iowa Central leading Northeast 28 to 25. Brooks, the sophomore guard, leading her offense. Gets it to the inside, cross, a jump stop, kicks it back out, Brooks, 4-3, and that'll miss as Haji Husanovic comes down with yet again another rebound. That was a great closeout by Carbonell coming down from the post, seeing the wide open man up on top, and for the wide open three, could have easily been wide open, but with her hustle, they were able to get up and save the three-pointer as that will be yet again another turnover for Northeast. They are now at seven turnovers in this game. So they're going to have to clean it up. These last few possessions have been a little bit rough for Northeast. As Stewart is checked back into the game, so she will control the offensive tempo for Iowa Central. Crooks just, a, or Stewart just a freshman Brings it to West. Stewart back to West, standing at the top of the key, somewhere you do not really want West to be. Shot clock running down as that'll be kicked out of play off of Kyla Moore's foot. Six seconds on the shot clock. Eight special. Eight special. 
Iowa Central is going to have to get a good look, and they're going to have to do it very quickly as they set up in a line formation at the top of the key. Back to West. West thinks about the three, decides to drive it instead, and the whistle is blown. And I believe it is going to be a carry there on West. So a turnover for Iowa Central back in Northeast possession. With the closing last minute of the halftime, hustling back and getting back will be key because every, each team is trying to get the most possessions that they can going into halftime. And you can hear the Iowa Central coach telling them to hustle back, and that may, just makes it that much better. Got it, got it. Hustle is key. As Carbonell tries for a three there, can't get it to fall. Cross comes down with the ball, and she is going fast down the court. Coast to coast, Cross puts it in and finds her eighth point of the night. 30 to 25, Northeast deficit is growing. Kalonic down the court. Picking up the speed. Yeah, both teams, sorry about that, Luke. Both teams are definitely picking up the pace as they're down to 30 seconds left in the half. That foul will be called on Hole, her second foul of the night. Both teams have a pretty clean first half so far. Only five fouls total in this game, or excuse me, Five fouls total in this second quarter, but the fouls right now, the totals are sitting at five for Northeast and six for Iowa Central. As Kalonic will head to the line. Macy Kalonic, a 55% free throw shooter. She struggled last night from the line, so she'll see if she can recover and get herself out of that hole as she sinks shot number one. Northeast two for two at the line tonight. As that one will be just short, Cross pulls down the rebound. Cross again, only 5'7", but she is out rebounding Northeast and doing a great job underneath. And the shot clock and game clock are spot on, so Iowa Central trying to wait for that last shot. Cummins gets it back to Cross, who's going to set up their offense. Brooks. Standing atop the key, down to five seconds left on the game clock. As Cummins top of the clock in, a big time block for Carbonell. She's going to have to put up a shot, heaves it. That shot won't count even if it did fall. So right now, Northeast, they are being outplayed in the second quarter. They are trailing Iowa Central 30 to 26, heading into halftime. We're going to take a quick break. We'll be back here later with your halftime report. The Media Arts Program is designed to train our students to prepare to create that content that they would see out in the world of media. From uh, pure sound and sound effect that would include music to cinematic looks to creating news broadcasts and packaging news and broadcast information that uh, people all over the world might look at. Northeast Community College has a lot of advantages in our media arts program. When people try to do this on their own, um, they might be watching instructional videos uh, online or reading books or just picking things up and trying them. And that's great. That's great to try and train yourself. But what happens is, is there's gaps in your knowledge. You find something that works, but you don't understand why it works. When you come to us, we will put all those gaps together. We will fill all of those gaps. Before coming here, I didn't know a lot about sound. I mean, I had run sound for my church, but I didn't know about the science behind it. And they completely deconstruct it and teach you the very, very basic physics of sound and how signal flow works and the electronics behind it. And they really work your way up. And it's hard, but it's very, very rewarding. And I definitely feel prepared for the industry. When I was in school, um, the professors did a really good job of setting me up for knowing what to expect when I was in the working world. They did not lie to us, you know, it's not going to be just roses all the time. Um, you're going to have to work some really long hours, you're going to have to work really hard to find your jobs and to network. There's so many different possibilities for learning and anything that you want to learn, you can learn and they teach you everything you need to learn in the industry. And so as long as you are willing to work hard, you're gonna learn a lot here and there's the possibilities are just endless for knowledge. A daily learning experience for a student here at Northeast would be hands-on 
simulation. What are you looking to do when you get your degree and you're out there in the industry? What can you expect as a student when you have that first job? What you're experiencing here as a student at Northeast is what you will be doing when you've got that first job. So it's really a hands-on simulation of what you're gonna be experiencing in the job field. One of the best things about Northeast Broadcasting Department, I think, is the equipment we have right here in the department is exactly what you're gonna see in the real world. From radio to TV, we have top-notch equipment. I'm in the radio business right now, and when I took that job, they have the exact same software as we have here in the school, and it made that transition very easy. Three, two, one. I wasn't extremely confident in radio when I first started broadcasting here, but the labs really inspired confidence and that was a good balance between learning about it and then going hands-on and making you comfortable with the two. Being a non-traditional student here at Northeast has been seamless. A lot of the younger generation has treated me just as an average Joe, just another student here. It has been wonderful and all the teachers and faculty have treated me in the exact same manner. I couldn't have picked a better place to come and fulfill my college dreams. The most rewarding aspect of this job is to see the students succeed in what they're learning here. Um, through the labs or maybe they picked up a part-time job while they're still going to school here. To see them grow and to see them succeed is the most rewarding thing ever. It's, it's rewarding to see someone go from being perhaps uncertain of themselves from either a technical or even a confidence standpoint and to see them be able to start a project, plan a project, execute the project and deliver the project. It's just it's an amazing progression through, through four semesters to watch a student have that kind of growth and have that kind of experience and then gain that confidence so that you can throw anything at them and they go, okay, we can deal with that. That's, that's probably the best. The strength of the digital cinema program is partially just how individualized it can be, how much help you can get, you know, on one specific project that you have, that the teachers will help. You can get, you know, other students in the class to help, but it's also individual. You get to do the whole, I made this from concept, you know, to content, just like that all by myself. So you just get that sense of pride of accomplishing something by yourself. My favorite part about my experience in the digital cinema program is the diversity in the projects that we've been learning. I'd say my favorite project was when Miss N. Smith made us shoot a music video. It was pretty cool to see how, what you can learn on your own and what you can do on your own within the first semester of shooting. It's very rewarding and it's a lot of fun to see the students that graduate and go through our program. You, you can see when they, when they get here, they're unsure of themselves. And as they go through our program, you can see their confidence build. And so right before they're gonna be unleashed into the market, they're really operating at a pretty high level for a two year degree. They come out with all this knowledge and all these, these skills and abilities that make them highly valuable and all they need is that one professional job, that one experience to put it with that and the sky's the limit. I believe that the education that I've got here at Northeast is incredibly accurate to what the real world is going to be like out there in, in the film, you know, digital cinema industry. Our professors that teach us these classes have experienced the exact same thing I'm going into. They know what it's like to work at a TV studio. They know what it's like to own their own business. Then they base, you know, our classes, they base our projects on things that actually could come up or have come up in real life. So we're prepared for that.
going too fast to prepare for this. Tripping in the world could be dangerous. Everybody circling as vultures. Negative, nepotism. Everybody waiting for the fall of man. Everybody praying for the end of times. Everybody hoping they could be the one. I was born to run. I was born for this. Whip, whip, run me like a race horse. Pull me like a rip. Something that I'm proud of Out of the box in the poxy To the world and the vision we've lost I'm an apostrophe I'm just a symbol to remind you That there's more to see I'm just a product of the system of catastrophe And yet a masterpiece And yet I'm half diseased And when I am deceased At least I go down to the grave And I happily Leave the body of my soul To be a part of me Whatever it takes Cause I love It's the most natural thing for me to dance, but I was tripping and I was falling and didn't even know what multiple sclerosis was. When I perform, I really love connecting with people. It's definitely cool to be able to give someone an experience through virtual reality. Oh my God. I dream sometimes and I see that. Seven, the nest. I am a veteran. My victory was finding the strength to be a champion. My victory is having a job I can be proud of. At DAV, we help veterans get the benefits they've earned. My victory was finishing my education. My victory was getting help to put our lives back together. DAV provides veterans with a lifetime of support. My victory is being there for my family. Help us support more victories for veterans. Go to DAV.org. Welcome back to the Cox Activity Center. Kelsey Bigelow joined alongside Luke Vi, and we have a good game going on right now. 30 to 26, Northeast trailing Iowa Central, the women's game right now. 
and we are just at halftime, but Northeast coming into this game 3-0, and Iowa Central the same, 3-0. and Both of these teams have been very evenly matched throughout this game. I mean, every statistic you look at is basically identical for both teams. Both teams struggling behind the arc, both teams uh, rebounding about the same, but Northeast struggling a little bit more on that end of the aspect. Luke, what have you seen out of both these teams so far this game? Both these teams, um, I've seen that Iowa Central, they're struggling from the three-point line. They are two of 10, and so is Northeast. They're two of seven from the three-point line. Northeast has also had a lot of post struggles also, you know, backside cutters, baseline cutters, all of that. And Iowa, Cent Iowa Central is out-rebounding Northeast 5-0 and oh on offensive rebounds. And if you want to get as many possessions as you can, especially when you're down four, you're going to the second half, you want to, you want to try to bring this lead up. You don't have to worry about any buzzer beaters or any really close games going down to the wire. And if there's anything else like I, I didn't add. Yeah, Northeast really, I mean, what we've seen is cross. Only 5-7 for Iowa Central, but she has four rebounds so far, two on offense and two on defense. Northeast has pulled back into the rebounding game. Right now, they're only being out-rebounded by five, I believe. So, yeah, they are being out-rebounded by five total. But Northeast is trying to climb back on into this game. They got out to a pretty good start. But since then, things have really slowed down as Northeast is trying to keep that unbeaten record. They come into this game 3-0. and They've beaten Iowa Central, their record against Iowa Central is 10 and one, so they have quite the track record against them. They actually haven't lost Iowa Central in, since 2013, so it's been a long time. So that's definitely an extra motivation factor as they head into, second, into the second half. Right now, Northeast trailing Iowa Central 30 to 26. We are just about ready for the second half of this game. We're gonna take a quick break. When we come back, we'll finish off this game, Iowa Central and Northeast here on the Hawk Sports Network. Mom, if my knee doesn't get better, I'm not even gonna play Saturday. These should help. I got them when I threw my back out. Are those your painkillers? I shouldn't be taking those. I got them from the doctor. What's the worst that could happen? Seriously? Lock them up or whatever. All right. I'll find out how to get rid of them. Probably shouldn't have them in the house anyway. Welcome back to the Cox Activity Center. Kelsey Bigelow joined alongside Luke Vi, and we are in the first game of the Northeast matchups for today. The Hawks Classic, always a great tournament. We are in the final day of the tournament, as yesterday the Northeast women took down Iowa Lakes with a score of 64 to 38. The men fell to Iowa Lakes yesterday. Speaking of the men's team, the men's game will follow this shortly after this. There will be a 20 minute intermission in between games and then the Northeast men will take on Iowa Central as well as they head into that game. Right now, Northeast trailing Iowa Central 26 to 30 as we get ready to start the second half of ball. Iowa Central has possession to start it off as Crooks will once again control the offense for Iowa Central. Northeast looking to climb back on into this game. West back to the top of the key to Crooks in a slow start right now. Not much ball movement, not much movement aside from the ball as both teams just standing around. Cross, top of the key being guarded by Moore as they are back to their 2-3. And a good shot, a good look for West as she can't get that one to fall, but that will go off the hands of Maxson as she cannot reel that one in. Lorna Maxson going to be wanting that one back. West found herself a three earlier this game. A 33% shooter from behind the arc, a 6-1 freshman. So not a typical shot you would see from a 6-1 player as Cummings tries for three herself and another backside rebound for Iowa Central. Cummings back to Cross, or to Crooks, excuse me, who sets up the offense. As the shot clock runs down, down to seven seconds as West takes it herself and against four defenders of Northeast, puts it up and gets her own rebound again, finds Hole, and Hole will bury that one. Hole gets on the board for the first time tonight. And a lackadaisical pass there from Beth Matisse as Iowa Central almost takes it away from Northeast. 
Stouffer on the far side, inbounds to Matisse. Matisse over to Kyla Moore, trying to get that cutting from Stouffer. Can't get her, so she gives it to Stouffer in the corner. Stouffer to Maxson, top of the key. Shot clock down to 13 seconds. Lorna Maxson with her career high in points so far tonight. There's a Moore, kicks it to Matisse. Matisse, top of the key, gets ahead of herself and is called for the travel, so another turnover for Northeast. Northeast trailing 26 to 32, and that ball is thrown away. Matisse trying to chase it down, but she cannot get there. Matisse, a great hustle play there, trying to chase that one down to take control of the ball. I believe they will call that out of play though off of Iowa Central, so Northeast takes possession. So Iowa Central literally just throwing that ball away. Matisse, top of the key. And she is guarded very closely, gets it over to Moore. Moore getting the screen from Maxson. Stouffer, a good look from three. Stouffer puts it up in too deep on that shot. Matisse pulls down the rebound. On the far side, Moore takes the drive herself, takes one-on-one, -on -one, finds Haji Husanovic, who finds Stouffer. Stouffer, another good look, and can't get that one to fall either. Stouffer struggling from behind the line tonight. Averages 10 points on the season, but cannot get the job done behind the arc. Stouffer is a 33.3% shooter from three, and she's been getting a lot of good looks tonight, but she's kind of getting ahead of herself. It seems, she seems intimidated to me. Whenever like she's up at the three and the defender comes in, she starts to get intimidated and just jacks up the shot, and that's why we're seeing so many missed so shots for her tonight. As the shot clock runs down, Cross steps out of bounds below, down on the baseline. So a northeast, northeast will take possession off of the Iowa Central turnover. Iowa Central is starting to look a little frazzled right now. Northeast trying to cut into this lead as Beth Matisse brings the ball up the court. A good defensive matchup for both teams so far as Kyla Moore sinks the three and finds the bottom of the net. Kyla Moore for her eighth point tonight. As Matisse puts on the full court pressure and she is running alongside Crooks, but she is going to get called for the foul there. I would expect that from Kyla. She's a 50% three point shooter from three. So whenever, you, whenever she gets an open look, you will expect her just to shoot it. Kyla Moore, a great athlete for this Northeast team. One of the sophomores that was definitely a standout coming into the season. Averaged eight and a half points a game last year as a freshman. Kyla Moore defending Cummins very closely on the far side. As Crooks tries to take it one-on-one -on -one against Matisse. Kicks it back out to Cummins who gets the open lane. And he kicks it over to Hole. Hole gets the and one opportunity. Aliyah Hole, her fourth point of the night. Headed to the line for one more. That foul will be put up against Haji Husanovic for her second foul of the night. Hole heads to the line. A 71% free throw shooter from there, and she sinks that one. As Matisse pushes it out ahead to Stouffer, Stouffer taking a one-on-one -on -one against West, decides she better not and pulls it back out. As Stouffer stands in the corner. And Moore taking it herself and out of play as she saves it, but right to an Iowa Central athlete. Cross pushes it ahead. West running the court very well as Isabel West out in front of everybody and gets the easy bucket. Iowa Central did a really good job of spreading and having great court vision on that fast break. Yeah, a great fast break opportunity there for Iowa Central and they convert on it, extending their lead right now. Iowa Central leads 37-29. We're gonna take a quick break. We'll be right back here on the Hawk Sports Network. Oops. Uh-oh. Get on top of it before they do. Every 24 minutes, tipped furniture or a falling TV sends an injured child to the emergency room. Preventing tip-over incidents is easy, inexpensive, and only takes five minutes. Learn how to secure your furniture and TVs to protect children at anchorit.gov. 
Welcome back to the Cox Activity Center. Kelsey Bigelow joined alongside Luke Vi, and the Northeast deficit continues to grow as they are trailing Iowa Central 37 to 29 with 634 remaining in the third quarter. Northeast doing anything they can to climb back into this game, and I fully expect them to jump back to that full court pressure that they were applying earlier. Right now they have possession of the ball as they feed it to the inside to Haji Husanovic who kicks it to the far side as Matisse puts up the three and it rattles out as a fight for the ball down low. Cross comes away with it as she's going to push it out in front and finds a streaking down the court, Isabel West, but West misses the easy layup. A shot she's going to want back as Northeast pushes it right back at them. And a good floater for Hyla Moore. Northeast going to continue to push the ball out in front and try to wear down this Iowa Central team. Ingbrecht with the shot. Haji Usanovic pulls down the rebound. Stouffer pushing it up to Matisse. Matisse finds Kyla Moore, but good recovery there by Ingbrecht to race back down the court and knock that out of play. You can tell coming out of the timeout, they don't want to lose any, Iowa Central does not want to lose any momentum. So they're keeping up that fast paced play, try to keep Northeast on their toes, just like Northeast did to them in the first half. Yes, Iowa Central playing up to the level of Northeast. They've done a great job able to contain their stamina as Kyla Moore falls to the ground and a good feed to Haji Usanovic is wide open underneath. That's another two point bucket from Haji Usanovic. Does a really good, great look from Beth up at the top. She was about five feet back from the three point line. That could have been considered a dangerous pass, passing so far down to the post like that with three Iowa Central defenders around Amina. Iowa Central back in control of the ball, leading 37 to 33. Crooks sets up her offense as the shot clock is winding down already. Ingbreg taking Stouffer one-on-one, -on -one, kicks it to Cross. Cross puts up the shot, and that is going to be deep as West pulls down the rebound, but they are going to get her for a foul, I believe, over the back. So Northeast will take possession. That is Isabel West's first foul of the night. Again, both teams doing very well. Correction, correction, that was a pushing foul and not an over the back foul. So Isabel West gets her first foul of the night as Lorna Maxson inbounds it to Kyla Moore who brings it down the court. Trying to climb back into this game. Northeast struggling as of late. In the corner, Kyla Moore sets up the offense, finds Maxson at the top of the key. Kalonic thought about it. Kyla Moore cutting to the basket and puts it up and pushed over and she's going to head to the line for two. That foul will be on Justice Crooks, her third foul of the night. Kyla Moore once again heading to the line, a 73% shooter from the line heading into tonight's game as she buries the first one. 11 points on the night for Kyla Moore. She averages 17 points a game. The leading scorer, her and Beth Matisse, tied for leading scorers for Northeast, as that one cannot fall. Northeast back within three. Four and a half minutes remaining in the third quarter. As Crooks will head on over to the bench with three personal fouls. And you can definitely tell the pace of game has slowed down a little bit. Both teams looking to be worn down just a little as Isabel West puts up a three-point shot. And that'll be a deep rebound for Hole, who maybe got away with the travel there. Back to the top of the key. Stewart setting up the offense. Stewart feeds it to the inside. Hole with the turnaround jumper and gets that one to fall. Aliyah Hole with the two-point bucket. Both teams are shooting the ball very early into the shot clock, trying to force shots just like there. But in this case, Macy was able to make the three. A good shot there from Macy Kalonic as she buries the three. Stewart picked up her dribble, Kalonic all over her as she finds Ingbrecht back to Stewart. Stewart dribbling to the near side. Northeast back in that 2 3 defense. Carbonell guarding the corner as Kyla Moore almost comes away with the steal as she's going to get called for the foul. And Kyla Moore exchanging a few words with the official there. Kyla Moore, foul number two on the night. Not very happy with that last call. As 
Iowa Central coach Kelly Kruger wants to talk some things over. So we're going to take a quick break with them right now. Northeast Trail 39-37. We'll be right back here on the Hawk Sports Network. Welcome back to the Cox Activity Center. Kelsey Bigelow joined alongside Luke Vi for the first game for Northeast of the day. Right now, the Northeast women trailing Iowa Central 39 to 37 with three and a half minutes remaining in the third quarter. Iowa Central really getting the job done start of the second half as Hole, another turnaround. Jay uses it off the glass and a great touch. Aaliyah Hole, another bucket. Beth Matisse brings it down the court for Northeast. Swings it over to Kalanick, who had a three the last possession. As she thinks about the drive, kicks it back to Matisse. Great ball, great ball movement by Northeast. As Zagorak, good turnaround, Jay there. With the ball movement, they were able to get Zagorak with a great open look down in the post. And it was also a nice post move. A good shot there from Katarina Zagorak, finding her first points of the night. Stewart, top of the key, swings it to Crooks. Iowa Central really slowing down the pace right now as they feed it to the inside. Cross tries to drive herself, kicks it over to Crooks. A good pass from Cross. Crooks cannot get it to fall as Lorna Maxson will push it ahead for Northeast. And a bad pass there for Maxson. Lucky Matisse came away with it. Carbonell up to Kalonic over to Matisse. Feeding it back to Zagorak, finds Kalonic top of the key. A deep three again there for Northeast. Can't get it to fall. Crooks comes away with it. That was Beth, a, go ahead. That was a great kick out by Northeast, but unfortunately Beth wasn't able just to make the three, even though it was heavily contested. Yeah, Beth Matisse shooting it from deep as she'll try to get it back on defense as Cummings kicks it out to Hole. Hole with another shot. Hole with the hot hand as of late, and she finds the bottom of the net once again. Hole with 11 points for Iowa Central. Beth Matisse trying to get something going for this Northeast offense. Carbonell, as they stand at the top of the key, not a lot of movement for Northeast. The ball is moving slow as Lorna Maxson puts up the three and Lorna Maxson, two for two from behind the arc tonight. Shooting really well. Lorna Maxson, eight points on the night. That is her career best so far here at Northeast. There's Crooks. Passes it to Cummings, who swings it over to Stewart. Feeds it to the inside to Hole, who has the hot hand. Back out to Stewart. Stewart puts up the three, and that is going to find nothing but air and tip back into play for Northeast. Beth Matisse says we're not going to push it, but then decides to find Carbonell on the far side. Down to a minute remaining in the third quarter as Kalonic, a good pump fake, takes it to the hoop herself. Can't get it to fall, but fights for the rebound. One on four underneath, and Kalonic is able to get the tie up. A great play there from Macy Kalonic. Hey, Northeast retains possession. They will inbound underneath their own hoop, trailing by one. Hey, one, sec, one sec. Carbonell with the inbound pass. Finds Matisse in the corner who feeds it back to Lorna Maxson. Maxson with this strong power dribble, puts it up too strong off the backboard. Iowa Central pulls it down. Jessica in Ingbrecht up back to the top of the key to Crooks. Ingbrecht with a good cut to the hoop and a good block there from Katarina Zagorak. Matisse pulls up from three behind the arc and puts it down. Beth Matisse a big time three there giving Northeast the lead. 45-43 with 20 seconds remaining in the third quarter. 
a gutsy shot there from Beth Matisse to decide to pull up behind the arc. She sinks it and gets the momentum for Northeast. Top of the key, Cummings winding down the clock as Ingbrecht standing there, ball above her head, kicks it to Cummings, a very deep three for Cummings, tries to respond with one of her own, can't get it to fall, gets her own rebound, and her second shot will fall short. Northeast taking the lead late in the third quarter, 45-43 over Iowa Central. We're gonna take a quick break. When we come back, we'll have the rest of this game here on the Hawk Sports Network. I have a voice in the freedom to express it. I have my faith as a freedom of religion. I find the truth and have the freedom to share it. I have a cause and the freedom to peacefully assemble. I have a concern and the freedom to petition my government. Think first. Know your five freedoms of the First Amendment. Go to thinkfirstamendment.org to learn more. Drug addiction can cover up the beauty in our lives. But with treatment and the support of family and community, we can recover what makes life shine. The beauty waiting just beneath the surface. For confidential information on substance use disorders, including prevention and treatment referral for you or someone you know, call 1-800-662-HELP. Brought to you by the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services. Welcome back to the Cox Activity Center. Kelsey Bigelow joined alongside Luke Vi once again for some Northeast basketball. Shortly following this game, the men's basketball team will take on Iowa Central themselves. The men have a lot ahead of them as they fell last night to Iowa Lakes in a close matchup, a very physical matchup. So see how they respond tonight. Right now, though, we are set for the fourth quarter of this Northeast Iowa Central women's basketball game. Right now, Northeast taking a late lead in the late part of the third quarter, 45 to 43. Iowa Central with the ball. As they try to get the ball moving, a lot of slowage of the game late in this third quarter. That was a nice trap by Zagorak and Amina down on the post. As Cummins comes away with it. As the shot clock runs down, they're down to five seconds. They're gonna have to get a shot up as Crooks puts an awkward shot and gets it to fall just as Crooks for two. Crooks with six points tonight. Typically averages to 13, so not her be best performance so far. Into the inside as Haji Husanovic tries to work it. Kicks it out to Stouffer. Stouffer with the drive, kicks it to Haji Husanovic, and Haji Husanovic is just long on that shot. Pulled down by West. This game is all knotted up at 45 apiece. Crooks pushes it ahead to Ingbrecht. Back to the top of the key. Far side, Cummins closely guarded by Kyla Moore, who is very good at defense. That is her specialty. As the shot clock is running down once again for Iowa Central and not much ball movement, Ingbrecht, and that'll bounce off of Ingbrecht's foot. It'll be Northeast ball. Northeast has been doing a really good job forcing Iowa Central to wait till late, later in the shot clock just to force up a shot, but even then they aren't even getting any looks. Props to Northeast for creating such creating such havoc on the offensive end. Yes, Northeast has done a great job defensively all season and it's showing again later in this second half as Beth Matisse will draw the foul. That is a quick foul on Crooks for foul number four. So she is going to find herself a little bit of bench time with still eight and a half minutes remaining. Northeast has the ball on the far side. Brianna Stouffer will inbound it as they try to extend the lead. Right now we're tied up at 45 apiece. Beth Matisse over to Moore, has the one-on-one -on -one opportunity, finds Haji Husanovic instead. Can't get it to fall, uses the glass, but just not there for Haji Husanovic. Freshman Stewart from Jacksonville, Florida, directing the offense. Cummins over to Stewart, Stewart right back to her. As Cummins working against four defenders and off the glass, a great finish there for Annie Cummins. Northeast has a lot of work cut out for them as they trail right now 47 to 45. Have found themselves struggling this game as a great give and go. Amina Haji Uzanovic cannot finish that. However, she's going to want that one back. Cummins steps out of play, so that'll be Northeast ball. 
That was a great, that was a great play by Brena, attacking the ball like that, forcing her to step out of bounds and turn the ball over. Again, the Northeast defense comes up with a stop and a turnover for Iowa Central. Northeast still trailing by two. A great crossover by Stouffer puts it up off the glass, can't get it to fall. And Iowa Central pulls it down. Ingbreg pushing it ahead, a one on two opportunity. She pulls it back out and decides to reset the offense. That was great at best to stop the fast break like that in the corner, force the ball to the top. And gets a little bit ahead of herself. That's cross on the far side. Gets called for the travel. Checking into the game for Iowa Central is West. Checking back in for Northeast. Right now, Carbonell and Lorna Maxson. Lorna Maxson playing one of her best games of her career here at Northeast. She has eight points right now. Has sunk a couple three-point shots. Carbonell thinks about splitting the defenders. Can't get through. Back to the top. Kyla Moore. Northeast trying to get something going on their offense as Lorna Maxson takes it to the hoop one on one and finishes. Finishes strong. Lorna Maxson back on the board. 10 points on the night. Maxson typically only averages 3.3 points a game, so really outdoing her typical self tonight. Cummins feeds it to Hole, who has had the odd hand for Iowa Central. A pass was there, the thought was there for Stewart, but just too far of a pass. That'll fly out of play. So Northeast will take possession. Tied up 47 to 47, 643 remaining in this game. It is going to go right down to the wire. Neither team in much foul trouble, so that will not be a factor as Kyla Moore tries to get a three to fall. Cross pulls it down and she's going to push it ahead as she loves to do. Cross trying to take it coast to coast off of her own foot. Pulls it back out to the top of the key. Avery Tilly into the game for Iowa Central. Cummins to cross, cross over Amina. Can't get it to fall, but right there is West and a good stuff by Carbonell. Stops Isabel West in a takeaway there by Kyla Moore and they have numbers. Kyla Moore gets it ahead to Matisse. Matisse puts up the awkward shot and gets it to fall. Northeast takes the lead, 49 to 47. A great sequence of events there for Northeast. Off the block from Carbonell, a steal from Kyla Moore, and then a finish from Matisse. As another takeaway for Northeast, Kyla Moore trying to keep control of it. That is going to be a foul called on Cross. As slow to get to her feet is Kyla Moore. She's up to both of her feet now, and she's ready to go. A little bit of frustration in her eyes. She might be limping a little bit. Took a hard hit on the knee going down. She's, she's been all around the court all night. If she's been diving for loose balls, she's been picking up players out on the and out on the three-point line, and she's just been doing everything. I think she is the sole reason why Northeast is still in this game. Even though she might not be scoring all the points, she's still there filling up gaps where other people have been making mistakes, which is still in keeping them in game. Yes, Kyla Moore, a great leader of this Northeast team. She plays with a lot of heart. She plays very fast-paced and. Definitely a big part of this defense for Northeast as Matisse just over the head of Maxson, so taken away by Crooks. Crooks back into the game with five fouls. She'll have to be careful here. If you're Northeast, you want to take it right at her. Down to about five minutes remaining. Crooks top of the key once again. Swings it to cross. Kyla Moore playing tough defense in a timeout. Iowa Central wants to talk things over. We're going to take a quick one with them. We'll be right back here on the Hawk Sports Network. Have. Welcome back to the Cox Activity Center. Kelsey Bigelow joined alongside Luke Vi for the first game for Northeast of the day. It's the Hawks Classic here on the Hawks Sports Network. We have a lot of great basketball still to be finished. We are in quarter number four right now. Northeast beating Iowa Central 49 to 47. Five minutes remaining in this game. And Luke, what is Northeast going to have to do to finish off Iowa Central? 
what Northeast is going to have to do, like I've been talking about all game, is a post play. We're still seeing a lot of those back doors. We're still le seeing a lot of those baseline cutters. If they can stop those, I feel like they can stop them in their tracks right where they are at now because they are still shooting very poor from the three-point line, Iowa Central. They're 2 of 16, and they're 20 of 52 from the field. So I think if they can stop the post play and stop the momentum in the post from Iowa Central, they will be able to come out here with a win in the last five minutes of the fourth quarter. Yeah, I agree. Iowa Central getting the job done inside. A big part of that has been Hole, who has played tremendous tonight. 11 points on the night so far and has been great as of late. As a deep three put up there by Cummins. Can't get it to fall. Maxon pulls down the rebound. As Northeast will try to extend their lead. Right now, leading by two. Beth Matisse, top of the key to Carbonell. Maxon swings it all the way around. Gives the screen to Kyla Moore. Northeast needs a little bit of ball movement. Carbonell takes it herself, a Euro step, and Carbonell finishes it off with her favorite move, Julia Carbonell, 4-2. Back in the hands of Iowa Central. They trail by four, four minutes remaining. Northeast back in that 2-3 defense. Amina guarding the inside, guarding hole very closely as Kyla Moore all over Cummins and gets the steal taken away as she pushes it ahead to Matisse. Matisse off the backboard, can't finish it. Kyla Moore's there for the follow, puts it up, a very high arcing shot. Can't get it to fall back out to Matisse. And that Matisse is going to get called for the travel there, so a tough break for Northeast. That's the hustle and the heart that I was talking about with Kyla that's keeping them in this game. Yes, Kyla Moore, a great takeaway, follows down all the way down the court, follows with a shot of her own, can't get it to fall. Tough break for Northeast there as a good steal and just like that, Beth Matisse makes her name known and recovers from that turnover she just had minutes ago. Back down the court, Stewart on top of the key. Northeast guarding them very closely as Kyla Moore picks her pocket once again. Kyla Moore's gonna take it coast to coast all the way by herself. Kyla Moore up and in, finishes it off. Two points, Kyla Moore. And this is getting out of hand for Iowa Central as back-to-back -back steals for Northeast. Northeast extends their lead. They are now leading by eight points. We are down to three and a half minutes left in this game. We're going to take a quick break with them. We'll be right back here on the Hawk Sports Network. My dad's addiction and death from overdosing on opioids has taught me it's likely that everybody knows somebody who is struggling with this very problem. Losing my mentor, my best friend, he took one pill too many that ultimately killed him. Welcome back to the Cox Activity Center. Kelsey Bigelow joined alongside Luke Vi in a great turn of events here in the last few minutes for Northeast. Northeast extends their lead. They are now leading by eight, 55 to 47 over the Iowa Central Tritons. Both teams coming into this, coming into this game three and zero. Oh. Northeast trying to make their track record even better against Iowa Central. They are 10 and one against Iowa Central all time, and they haven't lost to them since 2013. So Northeast trying to get the job done once again. They have an eight point lead, three and a half minutes left to play. And Luke, what are they gonna have to do to finish out this game? What they're gonna have to do for Northeast, uh, like, it was, like I've been talking about all night, is the post. They have to really lock it down. It's easy just to be able to go up and get a couple of stops on the field in on the three-point line, but in the post is the most important part of the game right now. And, and you're going to see Iowa Central pressing just to try to get it down there because they've been so successful tonight, especially with the offensive and defensive rebounds. Top of the key. It's been taken away two times in a row by Northeast. Kyla Moore, tough defense, and she is going to get called for the foul there. She's trying to plead her case as Kyla Moore gets called for her third foul of the night. Not too much to worry about. Only three and a half minutes remaining in this game, so she should be okay. Still two fouls to give as Iowa Central underneath their own hoop. Cross gives it to Stewart, who drives right away, gives it to Hole. Hole with a hook shot and gets it to fall. Aaliyah Hole has been on fire for Iowa Central. Iowa Central still trailing by six. Dribble handoff to Moore. Moore picks up her dribble, guarded closely by Stewart. Over to Maxson. Maxson, who's carried the team tonight. 
Maxson tries herself, kicks it to Carbonell. Shot clock down to eight. Kyla Moore with the three off the front of the iron and a pulled down by Maxson who finds Moore once again. Moore streaking up to the court and pulls it down, puts it up and gets fouled. Kyla Moore will head to the line for two. That foul will be on Aaliyah Hull, her third personal of the night. Kyla Moore right now has 13 points on the night. Averages 17 as she heads to the line for two. Finds the bottom of the net, shot one. The new substitution rules, so she won't be able to check in right now. A little scoreboard air. Get things figured out as right now Northeast leads 56 to 49. 248 remaining in this game. Northeast really taking advantage as of late. Kyla Moore at the line. Second shot off the back iron. Can't get it to fall. And that'll fly out of play. It'll be off of Iowa Central. Or off of Northeast, excuse me. Checking into the game. Brianna Stouffer. Stouffer, a little bit of a slower night. Only 10 points tonight. Typically averages 10 a game. As Northeast back in that 2-3 defense trying to cause a little bit of a disruption. Skip pass across the court to West. West to Stewart. Cross, Crooks thinks about it and taken away by Haji Husanovic. A good steal there for Haji Husanovic. Pushes it ahead to Matisse. Matisse pulls up from three. Matisse can't get that one to fall. Stouffer pulls down the offensive board, kicks it back to the top of the key. And Massavela wants to talk things over. He's going to call a 30 second timeout. We're going to take one with him right now. North e Northeast leads 56 49. We'll be right back here on the Hawk Sports Network. Yes, I'm a smoker. And yes, I'm aware I should quit. I get pressure from everyone I love and everything around me. Smoking is really, really bad for you. Yet sometimes that pressure alone is enough to make me want to light up. At 1-800-QUIT-NOW, we get it. With free coaching services and nicotine gum, patches, or lozenges, we're here for you. No lectures, no judgment. Call us at 1-800-QUIT-NOW today. Welcome back to the Cox Activity Center. Kelsey Bigelow joined alongside Luke Vi. First matchup for Northeast for the day, second of the tournament. Right now, Northeast leading 56 to 49 against Iowa Central. Both teams fighting to stay undefeated on the season. Northeast inbounds the ball, top of the key. Beth Matisse controlling the offense. Kyla Moore, the sophomore standout, doing a great job tonight, leading her team. Northeast trying to get things done. Matisse, shot clock winding down, has to put up an awkward shot. Matisse gets it to fall, and that's when you know that you have the high hand if you can make a shot like that. Beth Matisse, the underhand scoop and shot, and sinks that one for two. I wouldn't be surprised if Northeast tries to take a little bit more time off the clock, shooting really late in the shot clock. You have a lead, you have a nine point lead and you want to take that and you want to try to stop their momentum with steals like what just happened. You want to try to take as much time off the clock, give them the least amount of possessions that they can. As Haju Sanovic will get called for the foul there. Almost got the steal, not quite called for the foul. So right now Haju Sanovic picks up her third foul. Northeast leads 58 to 49. As Cross inbounds it to Stewart. Stewart, top of the key. Northeast sticking to that 2-3 defense. Into the inside hole. Hole tries to make the hook shot once again, and she does just that. Aaliyah Hole is on fire tonight for Iowa Central. Their leading scorer. The leading scorer of the night all around. Kyla Moore taking it one-on-one -on -one against Crooks. Picks up her dribble. We are down to just over a minute left in this game. Northeast leading by seven. And they finds a wide open Hadji Usanovic. A great pass there from Matisse as Amina is wide open underneath the hoop. Northeast lead grows to nine. West skip pass over to Crooks. Crooks puts up the three and just short as a fight for the possession underneath and it'll be a tie up. Northeast ball. So a big tie up there underneath. As Iowa Central going to have to start fouling very soon. Checking into the game for Iowa Central, Jordan Ingbrick. Iowa Central applying the full court pressure. Lorna Maxson trying to inbound the ball. And a lot of movement for Northeast. They get it into Matisse. Matisse is 
It looks like Matt Savela, the coach for Northeast, he's going to call a timeout, a good timeout there by Matt Savela. We're going to keep it right here. Matisse gets the ball into the corner, gets the trap was coming, so a smart play there by Matt Savela. And what a great coach he is. His 26th season here at Northeast, he's racked up over 600 wins and 21 conference championships, two national tournament appearances. He's really just been an outstanding coach for this Northeast basketball program. Right now, Northeast leading 60 to 51 over Iowa Central. 54 seconds remaining in this game, and it is going to go down to the wire. It already is down to the wire. A nine point lead for Northeast, but that can slowly or quickly dwindle away, rather. Iowa Central is going to look to foul Northeast very quickly and send them to the line. Northeast, right now, for the season, they're shooting 67% from the free throw line. Tonight, they are shooting 57%, so four of seven tonight from the free throw line. So as they finish out the game, they're going to have to look to improve that number. Northeast trying to keep their undefeated season alive. 10 and one all time against Iowa Central. As the buzzer sounds, Northeast will jog back out onto the court. Again, Iowa Central with their full court pressure. Looks like they're going to man up this time. As a little screen action sends it deep. Lorna Maxson can't get it to Beth Matisse as Matisse finally in the corner and she is trapped and fouled. And maybe not the best foul there for Iowa Central as they had her trapped in the corner. Maybe look for the turnover first in that situation as Ingbrick gets tallied for the foul. That took a few seconds off the clock. We're down to 52.7 seconds remaining in this match. Max it sends it deep for Matisse. Matisse is wide open in the backcourt, gets it over to Kyla Moore who pulls it back out. Kyla Moore looking to run some time off the clock and Ingbrick again there to foul. So a big time pass there from Lorna Max and finds a person streaking down the court. That is Beth Matisse. Has a great setup there for Northeast. Northeast will head to the line. As Coach Massavela is telling all of his girls besides his shooter just to go back to the backcourt. Northeast leads 60 to 51. 48 seconds remaining in this game. Kyla Moore at the line to shoot two. Kyla Moore, first shot is just short off the front iron. So Northeast has all of their defenders back. Don't want to pick up a silly foul here. So Northeast, Kyla Moore puts it up and finds the bottom of the net. Shot number two. Kyla Moore, 15 points on the night, once again carrying her team. As they race down the court, Stewart puts up an awkward shot. Stewart can't get it to fall. Pulled down by Northeast. Brianna Stouffer kicks it over to Moore and gets it into the trusty hands of Kyla Moore as she is a 73% free throw shooter on the night. And hopefully the broadcaster's curse doesn't get me this time. Northeast with a 10 point lead. Cummings checking back into the game for Iowa Central. Cummings has done great tonight, has 11 points. So an offensive attack for Iowa Central. I would expect Iowa Central this late in the game being down by 10. You want to try to get as many possessions as you can, use, use as many fouls as you can against Northeast. I would expect them to make a sh to try for a shot at least at least five seconds into the shot clock, not if right when they get up to the court. Yes, Iowa Central in desperate need right now. Kyla Moore misses the front end and the back end. So a little bit more time runs off the clock. Kyla Moore tries to go for the steal and a silly foul there by Kyla Moore. That is something you cannot bail them out. You do not want to stop the clock and give them a chance to score. So Kyla Moore, silly foul, foul number four of the night. Northeast still leads 61 to 51. As Iowa Central looks to inbound the ball. I'd look for a quick shot. Kyla Moore defending closely, still in that 2-3 defense and a good look there for Cummins and she can't get it to fall. Lorna Maxson pulls it down, kicks it over to Stouffer. Stouffer up ahead to, way to break Moore. The, way to break the pass. Very, Couldn't have done it better. Very quick movement there for Northeast and a good job as Iowa Central is not fouling right now. Clock is winding down and coach is telling them just to get out of there and let Northeast have the win. So Northeast is going to move to four and zero on the season. A great performance. This women's basketball team is great and they have a lot more basketball to come. The clock in the final buzzer has sounded. Northeast wins 61 to 51 over Iowa Central. Northeast once again with the win. We'll be right back here on the Hawk Sports Network with your post game show. 
it's the most natural thing for me to dance. But I was tripping and I was falling and didn't even know what multiple sclerosis was. When I perform, I really love connecting with people. It's definitely cool to be able to give someone an experience through virtual reality. Oh my God. I dream sometimes and I see that. Seven, the Nets. Welcome back to the Cox Activity Center where your Northeast Lady Hawks come away with the win over Iowa Central. Northeast moves to 4-0 and oh, and Iowa Central moves to 3-1 and one on the season, so both very good teams. Taking a look ahead for the Northeast Lady Hawks, they will travel to, or they will play, once again, they will play Midland University JV on the 12th. So they have their work cut out for them, a lot of season ahead. Moving into later tonight, as you can see, the men's team is warming up. They, again, will face off with Iowa Central. So a big time game coming ahead. But recapping the women's win, they win 61 to 51 over Iowa Central. Started off a little sluggish and picked up the pace of the game there late in the matchup. The end of the third quarter, beginning of the fourth quarter, and from there on out, they didn't look back. I'm gonna have to give our player of the game award this game to Kyla Moore. Kyla Moore really has just carried this team of Northeast. She's done a tremendous job as the sophomore leader, had 15 points tonight, and really just didn't look back. She led all around aspect for Northeast. Not just her shooting, but also her defensive side of the ball, everything. What'd you see out of Kyla Moore? I saw hustle and heart out of her all game long. She was on the ground, she was moving around, she was closing out, she was boxing out, she was going for steals. She was attacking every single play and every single player with all that she had. And I think that is the number one reason why Northeast w had the win tonight. Yeah, I think that is going to be crucial heading into the rest of the season. So New Northeast improves their track record against Iowa Central. They are now 11 and one all time against them and they are 4-0 this season. Again, Northeast coming away with the win, 61-51 to against Iowa Central. We have a short intermission here in about 20 minutes or so. We will have your men's basketball team. Keep it right here. Kelsey Bigelow, Luke Vi signing off of the Hawk Sports Network.